Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. So it's Tuesday, and on Tuesday, we look at our channeled material. Now, I'm kind of nervous filming this right now because as I am filming this, I am also processing a video. As you're watching this, I am currently, future me is currently out of town. So I'm trying to get a lot of filming done before I go so my channel doesn't go dark while I'm away. So if for some reason the vocals and the image of me on the screen don't match because my computer is also processing a video at the same time, I will take the image of me down so you just have the vocals like a podcast because I know that can be annoying. So fingers crossed it works. We'll see. But of course, today we're once again looking at the great human potential which is a channeling from the Palladians and the Half Fours by Tom Kenyon and Wendy Kennedy. So if you're following along with us in this channeling, today we're looking at how to best deal with the news, wars, destruction, and death. Interesting, because we know we've learned a lot about the news in these last few years, haven't we, friends? So let's see what the Palladians have to say. So again, this is page 67 for those who are following along in the book. Um, if you would like to purchase the book, I do have a link down in the description box below you uh, to my Amazon shop, which has all the books that I use in the show for you to get your own copy. All right, the news. We would say that it is important to have awareness of your environment, but more importantly, what you perceive in your environment shows you where your personal vibration is. As you become aware of what is going on collectively, it is a reflection of what is going on with you at a microcosmic level. Yeah, on Aquarius Rising Africa, Shanti Morning and I talk about this all the time. That the macro and the micro are nothing but reflections of each other. If we want to get rid of the nefarious players on this planet once and for all, then we have to heal ourselves because like attracts like. And so what we're seeing with the controllers of the world and their religious, we'll say religious activities, is only a reflection of our own shadow side. Once we heal our shadow side collectively, then vibrationally, the activities of the dark players will not be able to exist on this frequency. So let me explain this. If we were to go, and, and of course, I, I have all faith that we will go and arrest all of these people who've done these horrific things. We will try them, and whatever the outcome of that trial is the outcome of that trial, we could get rid of every single bad person on this planet. But if we don't heal ourselves in the process, a new bunch of bad people are just going to spring up behind them. So we have to heal this wound at the starting point of the wound, if that makes sense. Remember, you operate under the laws of attraction and reflection, basically what I just said. If something is not in alignment with you in any way, shape, or form, you will probably never hear about it. And if you do, it will not have any effect on you. Laura Knight speaks about this in her channelings with the Cassiopeians. If we can get to a place where we learn not to react to the daggers that are thrown at us, then we really depolarize the negative force. And that's way easier to do. It's way easier said than done. Because I mean, I know it's hard when people say horrific things about you or do horrific things to you. It's hard not to take it personally. It's hard not to feel that gut punch, you know, but that's why we have to work on uh, practices like yoga and, and really observing ourselves so that we slowly learn how to not let other people's um, actions affect us to the point where it lowers our vibration, where we're able to look at the actions as simply cause and effect and not something that is going to destroy us. The important piece to take away when watching or reading the news is an awareness of your judgments. Where are your thoughts, feelings, and emotion when it comes to the story? If you are feeling angry, frustrated, or even apathetic, it is an opportunity for you to do some inner work. Yep, I just said that. To let go of any fears or low vibrational thoughts that you are carrying. Let us give you an example. 
Perhaps you heard in the news a story about bankers. And even though you are not directly involved in the situation, you feel yourself becoming activated and angry. You feel that you don't have any control or power over what is going on. We would say, where else do you feel powerless? Where is this scenario being played out in your life? Where in your life do you feel like a victim? We guarantee that you are playing this game in multiple areas of your own life. Your reaction to the story is an indicator that the programs are there. Now, because of the reflection, you have an opportunity to identify the frequency and integrate it. Look carefully at how the belief or thoughts serve you. When you recognize the pattern, you can then shift it. Maybe at another time in your life, this thought or pattern did serve you and kept you safe, but it may not serve you any longer. If this is the case, are you willing to let it go? An awareness such as this is the difference between being in the driver's seat vibrationally or being on autopilot. When you see the service of any thought, pattern, or belief, you move out of the victim-perpetrator mentality and move into the co-creator level of awareness. When you do this, you let go of any attachments or judgments. It immediately happens. It is only in the mindset of the victim-perpetrator that judgment can exist. At the co-creator level, all are acceptable experiences. They aren't good or bad. There is not one that is better to have or another. As co-creators, you all sought out and experienced these verified frequencies and roles. Yes, because coming to earth was a way for your soul to refine itself. The news is also an opportunity to identify where the collective consciousness is vibrating. Again, you are not bound to play out the frequencies of collective consciousness. You can hold your own unique frequency. But if you feel charged in any way, it means that you still have work to do. You are not a victim. Remember, when you shift your frequency, you holographically transmit the information on how it was done to the collective consciousness. Others may then access this information if they so choose. You give people who are struggling assistance and reassurance that it can by be done by simply being the living example. One of the major issues that you may see in the news revolves around the idea of competition. The third dimensional perspective says it's either this way or that way. It's either one or the other. One country wins a war, the other loses. If you either have prosperity or lack, with nothing in between. These stories keep you in separation. What we encourage you to understand is that this is not about either or, but rather and. The universe is infinitely abundant, so there truly is no limitation or lack except that which is self-imposed. You can have your own beliefs about the need for others to conform, all can succeed and flourish. And yes, I do agree with that, except for with wanderers. And we've talked about this before. Um, most of the actions that come to you are karmic actions of refining the soul. This is true for the wanderers too, most of the time, but there is the exception with wanderers. Wanderers get attacked hardcore by black magic. I wake up many, many mornings with bruises and scratches all over me. I don't want to get into the details of all of that, but that is not something as a wanderer that you've asked for. The reason why that attack and that annihilation is coming towards you is because you are here for a purpose, and that is to help Earth go in a certain frequency. Now, the thing about this as wanderers is you can be turned bad. And for the darkness, for the fourth density negative entities to catch a wanderer and turn them negative, it feeds them more superpowers. And so that is why they are constantly coming at you, first of all, to feed off of you and then hopefully, hopefully turn you by you and acting in their magic, basically. So just keep that in mind. If you are a wanderer and you want to learn um, how to protect yourself, um, comment that down in the comment section below and we'll see if I could do maybe a private Zoom with people. I won't put the information out publicly just because it's pretty sacred.
but there are things you can do to protect yourself. But I do agree that abundance is literally infinite and it's everywhere. And that's something that Jay from Spiritually Raw and Gnostic TV and I are doing together because he's right. This like 5D economy is about like us. We we get wealthy as we help each other. Yeah. And we are running. We've got a lot of people who have signed up with us, which I'm so excited about. I've been already giving people homework. We have a media course that is starting on October 15th. Um, as of now, October 15th, which is a Sunday. If we have to change that start date, I will let you know in the comment section. Um, that is as of now, which of course I am pre-recording this. So this is going to be the Sunday after I get back from my trip. And so um, it's a four week course uh, where you're going to work with Jay and me how to build your own content, build your own business, using things like YouTube as a tool to help you grow, get out of the matrix, get out of jobs you hate. You also get private one on ones with Jay and me as well in this course. And as I've said, even though the course date has not officially started yet, I've been already starting to work with some of our students and giving them homework and assignments and things to really help them figure out what's going to work for their them and their new lives. So if that media course is something you're interested in, changing your life, getting into that rhythm, that frequency of abundance, then please uh, text Bryce Media to 321-216-8047. That is Jay's phone number. And so he will send you a course outline and talk to you on the phone about this. Um, we have an Australian in the group as well. So we are taking people from anywhere in the world. It's going to be over Zoom anyway. So that is not a problem. But please, if you're interested, Bryce Media, 321-216-8047. And I promise you, Jay and I are going to work really hard to try to help you help yourself. All right, let's get back to the reading. When you move into higher frequencies of awareness, you see that everyone has the possibility to thrive. There are no victims. Many of you get frustrated when you hear us say this. You say, why would anyone choose poverty, war, or famine? How could they choose this particular version of reality? The reason is simple. They wanted to explore a frequency. Yeah, their soul needed to refine itself. Remember, this life is just a roller coaster ride. It's not, it's not permanent, right? We're here just exploring different different levels of our soul and therefore in exploring different levels of our soul we are refining that soul honor them for their choices as a divine being of light hold for them the wisdom that they may choose to see themselves from a higher perspective you can send them energy encoded with knowledge that they can choose to increase their frequency and experience more love ascension is not a requirement if others do not wish to awaken, it does not tie you into that reality. The law of one says that as well. If you don't ascend this time, it's fine. You'll just go back to another third density planet and time is endless, right? There's no end point. So whatever. You experience that reality because that is your choice. When you decide to move out of the mode of victim perpetrator, you can create a life of joy, abundance, and expansion no matter what the collective may be choosing. Wars, death, and destruction. We often hear you ask, why is there so much war and death in the world? Why aren't people doing more to stop it? Again, you are playing in a game of dissension and reascension and of the illusion of separateness, which is a big theme that we've spoken about on this channel as well as with Aquarius Rising Africa. Know that much of what is going on in the news is being manufactured. You are being told versions of stories that often do not include the whole truth. Remember, we told you earlier that truth is always colored by perspective. This is an opportunity to, yours to, to, to use your discernment. So ask yourself, is this truth in alignment with me? If the answer is no, then you can start to verbalize that, not for the purpose of confrontation, but rather as a way of expressing your desire to create reality with a higher vibration. You don't have to fight your governments. Well, you know, I guess we're not fighting the government because the controllers are going to be here until the end with us. Like, make no mistake about that. Do not fall for these fucking infiltrators that keep telling you that the controllers are gone because they're not, right? The bad guys, the 40 negative people that are trying to go 40 negative, capitulating and surrendering is not part of their moral compass. Why? 
because to surrender is service to others and they are going service to self. They will be here on this planet with us until the bitter end. All we do is choose not to be involved in their their bullshit, basically, and stand up for our rights and stand up for our values, not be a martyr, but also know that like the, when the day comes that they're done is when we ascend. So it's this friction is going to be here until the end. So use that friction. And if you're sitting there saying, oh, my God, I'm so tired. I'm tired, too. But that just means there's more lessons and more refinement. So see it that way, that this is a chance for you to refine even more of your soul before we hop into a whole other density. You just have to say that I want peace. If you hold focus and take action, that is the alignment with that higher desire. And that desire will be reflected in your reality. Anything you wish to fight against or eradicate is in fact something you are judging. You will continue to receive that which you judge as your reflection so that it may be brought to your awareness and integrated. The reason why on the surface, surface so many of you appear to be callous and not get involved in changing states of the world is in part because you have shut down your heart centers. This is usually due to a tremendous lack of self-love, fear of hurt, blame, or shame. Because that part of you is closed off, it is very difficult for you to have compassion. Now, concerning death, you know that everyone who has gone through a death cycle has done so willingly. There is not a single person on the planet who has died that did not do everything they wanted to do in this life as it was. We guarantee you, if there was anything else they wanted to do, they would have done it. How an individual goes through the death cycle, how they die, determines not only the vibrational experience for themselves, but also sets up an experience for those around them. Let us give you an example. A 90-year-old man passes in his sleep. You all, you all may say, ah, he lived a long, full life, good for him. But if an individual dies at the age of 20, you may say, ah, he is much too young, it should have never happened. The, percep the perceptions and judgments surrounding the matter and age of death can create vastly different experience for those re remaining on earth. If a loved one is murdered, that can set up programs of revenge or fear of safety. Suicides can trigger feelings of abandonment or guilt. Even in death, you co-create with others. We always say drama happens when you aren't paying attention to get your attention. When many die through a war or mass disaster, it can be per perceived as a tragedy, but also a gift bestowed upon the collective. Those who die choose to depart in such a manner and in such numbers, not only for their own personal experience, but also to awaken the collective consciousness to an issue. It is an opportunity to choose a new vibration, release fears and attachments, and to move into higher frequency. It is an opportunity that, unfortunately, most of you don't take. And I know this is pretty controversial, the stuff that they're writing here. So I understand what they're saying, but I can also understand where there would be triggers here with what they're saying. So I would just ask, just observe that Aristotle quote. It's a sign of an intelligent mind when you can entertain an idea without accepting it. So even if this stuff is triggering to you, maybe ask yourself why it's triggering you and then entertain the ideas without accepting them. The general tendency for most is to blame. If you can observe the situation as a service, it automatically puts you into the heart center and allows you to process similar frequencies in your own field. We encourage you to look at some of the current wars or disaster, disasters and ask yourself, what is the event really about? Is it about competition and control, safety, security, lack, trust? Where do I play out these issues in my own life? Start clearing at a personal level. Remember, what you see reflected in the, in the collective is there within you. Personal integration helps to create global change as you are no longer perpetuating that scenario. Currently, the collective creates wars and conflicts by trying to obtain what others have because they fear there's not enough to go around. They believe in lack rather than infinite abundance. As you increase your collective frequency, you will begin to move into a state where everyone's needs are met. 
In fact, your focus will no longer be on your personal needs, but rather on how you can best be of service. From this space of infinite abundance, you trust that all your needs will be met without ever truly focusing directly on them. We know you find this difficult to even fathom at this time because you are not operating in an unconditional way on the planet. As we told you, we are here to give you another perspective on how to dissolve the illusion. We offer you this simple affirmation. I stand in peace in the midst of chaos. No matter what is going on with the collective, you can generate your own unique experience. In times of war, you can create great peace in your personal life. In times of financial upset, you can create limitless abundance. You can experience love, wealth, connection, passion, and excitement all on your own. As you hold these frequencies, you become a way shower for others who may not be able to find them for themselves. As you radiate tremendous amounts of love and joy around you, there will be those willing to increase their frequencies to join you. But again, remember, they don't have to. The idea that all should want to increase their frequency goes again back to judgment and the idea of competition. You may hold a fearful belief that those who do not increase their frequency are better than those who don't, or that somehow you are not able to live a life of joy and love because, because others are unwilling to do so themselves. Not at all. Be the living example. All right, you guys, that's it for that chapter. We'll pick up again next week with the next chapter. Let me know your thoughts and your opinions down in the comment section below. Actually, you know what I want to hear in the comment section below? From those of you who have uh, done the shadow work challenges that we've done on this channel or on your own, I want to hear some of the biggest things that you've learned through the power of your own perception. Let me know. I'd love to hear from you. All right, you guys, I hope you have a wonderful day and I will talk to you soon. Bye, everybody.